What's up, addicts? Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Today, we are going to be breaking down the final game on the Week 5 slate for Fantasy Start Sits, the game between the Tampa Bay Vipers and the LA Wildcats. But hey, before we get into that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot. Anyway, thank you so much, and let's get started right away. All right, looking at this game going to be a pretty interesting game here. Vegas doesn't really know how this game is going to go. Right now, the over-under is at 40, which is the second highest on the week, although it's not that much higher than the uh, Dallas-New York game or the DC-St. Louis game. Uh, But right now, they have the Wildcats favored only by two. So definitely a bit of a toss-up. You got two one and three teams here that look to be better than their record. Uh, I'm going to side with the home team here. I think the LA Wildcats get it done. Yes, the Vipers have been on the uptrend uh, in the past couple weeks and, you know, definitely took down the DC Defenders last week in that 25 to nothing victory. But I think the Wildcats have enough strength here. They're getting a little bit healthier. Uh, hopefully they can figure their kicker situation out after sending Nick Novak to IR. Uh, but I really think that they have a strong chance of coming out here and doing more than uh, just barely beating the Vipers. I think they could win this game pretty easily. Uh, But anyway, you guys are here for fantasy analysis, so let's begin by looking at the away team, the Tampa Bay Vipers. Beginning with the quarterback here, uh, now no team is allowing less points to opposing quarterbacks than the Wildcats. Taylor Cornelius has had a nice few games at home, but traveling cross country to play a team in LA that has been really tough on quarterbacks, and considering that they might mix in Murray and Quentin Flowers may be back, although probably will be benched. There's just too much ambiguity uh, to trust this right now. And with the way the Wildcats are playing against quarterbacks, I would very much rather play almost anyone else. All right, let's look at the running backs though, because that is a spot that I'm definitely interested in. No team has allowed more points to opposing running backs than the LA Wildcats. So they're good at stopping the quarterback and not good at stopping the running back. Fire up Devian Smith and Jacquez Patrick in this one. Uh, Devian Smith looks to be the better back and is involved in the pass game, but Patrick definitely has had some splashes, especially last week. This should be another week with a very strong running game. It's also very important to note that Devian Smith is dealing with a foot injury right now. Uh, He did not practice on Wednesday. We haven't gotten the Thursday reports as of yet, so monitor this situation. If Devian Smith is not able to go, Jacquez Patrick becomes the number one option on the week and will be a tremendous value in DFS. So just keep an eye on that. But otherwise, I'd still rather go Devian Smith because of his passing game uh, involvement. Looking at the wide receivers here, the Wildcats have played really well against opposing receivers, but Dan Williams has been playing too well to Pence. I'm not looking anywhere else though. Tolliver, other than week three, and Reese Horn have not shown that they have a ceiling worthy of a start, and their floor is very unexciting. Now the tight end situation gets a bit interesting. The Wildcats have been one of the worst teams versus the tight end, and it looks like Nick Truesdale is on the rise to come back this week. He had a full participation in practice on Wednesday. And, uh, you know, we saw what DeAndre Goolsby was able to do in this offense last week. So if there's anyone that's going to make a splash outside of Dan Williams, definitely like Nick Truesdale a lot this week. He's very cheap in DFS. Could be a very nice contrarian play. And then looking at the defense here, this is the second highest over under on the week. I like LA Moore at home in this one, and I don't think the Vipers will be able to do too much to stop Johnson and McBride. Josh Johnson isn't making too many mistakes, so for that, I'm going to pivot off of this defense. All right, let's jump over to the LA Wildcats, and we'll begin by looking at Josh Johnson, the quarterback here. Now, the Vipers are pretty much in the middle of the pack in terms of points allowed against the quarterback, but Josh Johnson has been playing incredibly well arguably the best pure passer in the league and at home he should be a very strong start this week he doesn't give you much in terms of rushing volume i think he only has like seven yards uh on the ground throughout the entire season but he's been getting it done through the air has the best chance to score multiple touchdowns uh, outside of philip walker so he's a pretty decent option uh in his own regard and definitely should be started if you have him in season long Uh, On the running back side, no team has actually allowed less points to opposing running backs than the Vipers. They're very good against stopping the run, 
and this is likely going to be another game that's going to be heavily reliant on Josh Johnson, but it is looking like Martez Carter could be back this week. He brought in a limited practice dealing with that hip injury on Wednesday. He was so heavily involved in week three and looked great. He could still make a splash here. If you picked him up off of the waiver wire either last week or this week, you're probably in a spot where you want to play him. I'd still throw him out there as a dice roll, even though he's going against a tough defense. All right, on the wide receiver side, the Vipers are averaging the least points against the slot and the tight end, and the second least to wide receiver twos and other peripheral receivers. So they're very good at stopping the uh, understudies, yet they have allowed no, they've allowed the most points to the opposing team's alpha receiver one. So if Spruce plays this week, definitely makes things a little bit muddy, but you still have to start him just with how he's playing, but it's looking very questionable at this point for you to have to start uh, Nelson Spruce. It looks like he's gonna miss another week. McBride is going to ball out this week. The Vipers struggle deep down the field where McBride has been playing really well. And also keep in mind that uh, Saeed Blacknell is a sneaky flex in deeper leagues and DFS because of how much the Vipers struggle deep down the field. They released Kermit Whitfield this week, which indicates to me that they're pretty excited at what uh, Blacknell showed him last week. Um, now I do think that Smallwood could surprise uh, and still have a pretty decent game here. If Spruce is out, I'm still comfortable starting Smallwood. I don't think his ceiling is quite as high as it was last week, but he should still have a decent floor because this game is going to have uh, this team is going to throw the ball a lot. But again, if you have McBride, you have to start him. He's probably going to be pretty heavily owned again in DFS, but it's going to be worth it. Um, should be the number one receiving option on the week. All right, and jumping over to the tight end, as I had already mentioned, the Vipers are very good against the tight end. They're actually allowing the least production to opposing tight ends in the entire XFL. Brandon Barnes has been okay, but has still been relatively underutilized. Uh, this doesn't look like a matchup for him to turn things around, and he is dealing with a knee injury right now. He was limited in practice on Wednesday. So if you have another option, a Marcus Lucas, a Jake Powell, definitely look to pivot off of Brandon Barnes this week. And then looking at the defense here, I don't think the Wildcats would be the worst start this week. Although from a fantasy perspective, they've really only performed well against the DC implosion in week three. I think they should win this one. This game's at home. Tampa Bay has been scoring more points than usual and can limit LA's upside, but I would like for them to be able to force some turnovers here, maybe get a touchdown on defense, which has really been the turning point for a lot of these defenses if they get a defensive touchdown that really wins the week for them. So definitely think the Wildcats will be a top four option this week. All right, guys, that pretty much does it for the game previews this week. Thanks for joining us in this and uh, make sure you check out our website at the fantasy addiction network.com we got everything you need there to get you ready for this week and keep you going throughout the entire xfl hit that like and subscribe button again it really does help us out a lot and let us know in the comment section if you have any other thoughts or recommendations for how we can grow the channel and make things better for you guys so thank you so much for watching and i appreciate it very much we'll see you in the next video